Here's your transfer, Lomas. If it weren't that I were done with business, I wouldn't have parted with none of them shares. Aye, ah, Riverbank's a pretty sound investment. You must hold most of them now, don't you, Lomas? I do. I can outvote the rest of them put together any time I want to, including Jack Adams. Aye. Ah, he's a director of Swifts as well as Riverbank, ain't he? Aye, ah, he is. But he can't come the grand stuff over me the same as he does with them. <laughs> hey, when are you going to tell him the news? Tonight. I've asked them to come up to the house. I reckon they'll be surprised. He, I'd like to have a look at Jack Adams's face. <laughs> <laughs> I should be having that pleasure about half past six. Ah. Well, you best be going along. Boozer went a while back. Aye. Time goes fast in business. Aye, grace comes fast and all. <laughs> I'm not sorry to be retired, I'm not. Uh -huh. There's a young man come to see him. Well, what's his name? He says his name's Barton. Stephen, ask him in, Clara. You can come in. Oh, thanks. It's Ellen, isn't it? Yes, it's a long time since we last saw each other, isn't it, Stephen? Over ten years. I was only a kid then. Well, what's brought you all the way up here? Uncle Lomas. I had a letter from him three days ago. It'll be about this meeting, I expect. You're a director, aren't you? Well, of sorts. I didn't know you had director's meeting. He's not in yet, I suppose. He always comes in at half past six for the minute. Oh, I'm supposing the clock is fast or slow. Our clocks are never fast nor slow. No matter what happened in the house, it is. <laughs> well, it seems that I'm a bit early. Why, what's the matter, Ellen? That's his chair. Oh, who's been sitting in my chair? He likes to have the same chair in the same place every night. Yes, and the same slippers in front of the same fire at the same time in the same room. <laughs> what a man of custom he is. Aye, he is. When a man's used to a thing, it doesn't do to break with it. You're very fond of him, aren't you, Ellen? Aren't you? Well, I ought to be. He's been more than an uncle to me. In fact, I don't know where I should have been without him. And I don't know where I should have been without him either. And where would he have been without you? <laughs> a man can always get plenty of housekeepers. Ted Crowther and Bob Ingram's here. Well, ask them to come in. You have to come in. Good evening, Ted. Good evening, Good evening Bob. Good evening. You know Mr. Stephen Barton, Mr. Ramsden's nephew. Kate Ramsden's son? Yes. He, she had a grand funeral. Delighted to renew our acquaintance. Why, I wouldn't have known you again. That's a long time. I don't know why Loomis bothers with directors. He'll have what he wants. Directors are no directors. Always were pig-headed, he were. <coughs> well, what's to do, Elf? That's his chair. Oh, some people are mighty particular. To me, there's only two kinds of chairs. Thard and soft. And this is one of thards. You've known my uncle all your life, haven't you? Pretty near. We were boys together. Started at Riverbank, same time. Really? He's got on. I haven't. I can't see object of it myself. The more you get on, the more you have to worry about. <laughs> You're a philosopher, Mr. Crowther. Nay, nay. I don't take no interest in politics. Jack Adams is here. Well, ask him to come in. You have to come in. Good evening, madam. Oh, Bob. How do, Jack? This is Mr. Stephen Barton, Mr. Ramsden's nephew. How do. How do? What's all this fuss about board meetings? Hey, I haven't an idea. <laughs> it is chair. Waste of time, I calls it. Him sat atop a table, waiting for someone to propose something so that he can have the pleasure of turning it down. Riverbank Miller's done pretty well all the same, Mr. Adams. I'm not complaining about that. I'm complaining about him wasting my time. Hey, we do things very different up at Swift's. Swift's have a director's meeting every day, I suppose. We have them when they're wanted. Well, they haven't helped you to pay a dividend or brought your shares up, have they? There's only one cotton mill in Bradley, and that's Riverbank. Anyway, I've got say up at Swift's, and I haven't here. Perhaps it's lucky you haven't, eh? Well, I wonder what's it win. Well, happen I'm here to tell you that. Well, Uncle Lowe. Hello, Stephen. Well, you're looking very fit. How's Oxford College? Fine. That's right. Well, I'm very glad to see you. Are we all here? I think so. And waiting. Gee, Jack Adams has been kept waiting. Oof, what a national calamity. 
Uh. Young man, you'll oblige me by not smoking those things in here. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle. I didn't know you objected to smoking. I've nothing to say against an honest pipe. It's them things in paper I can't stand the sight of. Well, Ted, I suppose you're wondering what to do. Nay, no, Lomas, I was never given to speculation. <laughs> Riverbank shares have not been a bad speculation. <laughs> you're going to have this meeting. I'm ready. Nay, nee, I won't bother with my pipe now, lass. I've got plenty to do with my mouth before the night's over. <clears throat> Sit there, Ted, will you? Thank you. I shan't keep you very long. Gentlemen. Here, here. You can save all that stuff, Ted, till you get to the hippodrome. Gentlemen. Well, seeing as how we've got to discuss uh, things that don't concern women, there's no need for you to stay, lass. Here, here. Oh, you might as well stop. After all, what I have to say does concern you indirectly. Gentlemen, I am 50 years of age today. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry, Uncle. Many have returned. I didn't bring you here to talk that kind of stuff. Of those 50 years, I've spent 38 in Riverbank Mill. Like Ted and Jack here, I started work when I was 12 years of age, but I've got on. That's right. Hey, I haven't done so bad. More by luck than judgment. Here I... I've learnt my job. I've saved my brass. I bought up most of shares and they came on market. And now I as good as own mill. Aye, that's true enough. But I've never had no youth. I've never played no games and had no sports. So while Ted Crowell was chasing rabbits on moor, and Jack Adams was chasing flappers in the street. Oh, you can leave that out. I worked. It's been work, work, weekday, Sunday. I was a man when I was 14. And now I'm an old man at 50. No, Lomas, no. And now I'm going to quit. I'm not disposing of none of my shares, but I've given them my best for eight and thirty years. And now I'm content to hand over the oars to somebody else. Aye, I think you're acting wisely, Lomas. <laughs> I'm glad I've done something, Jack Adams, at last that meets with your approval. Well, tomorrow I shall be saying goodbye to the mill, and in less than a week I shall be saying goodbye to Bradley as well. Then I'm going to taste some of the pleasures of life and pick up a few of the years I've lost. Hey, it must be grand to think the pond's not got to work no more. Happen you'll miss the mill when you get away, Lomas. <laughs> As a prisoner, Mrs. Prison Grub, when he's out. And, uh, who's to be your successor? Stephen. I've given him the best education that money can buy, with this end in view. But he's to carry on for me when I'm retired. Eh, hey, but I must stand for that. Ah, I thought somehow as how you wouldn't, Jack Adams. But what does he know about cotton? Hasn't he learned all about cotton at Oxford? I suppose you thought you'd get job. But what does he know about business? He's got brains. That's what he's got to pull over you. Well, Uncle, there seems to be some dissension. Right? You mm -hmm. leave this to me, my lad. I'm carrying this through. We have all heard what I proposed. Anyone going to second it? I have much pleasure in seconding it. Ah, you would. All those in favour? Against? Well, aren't you going to vote, Jack Adams? Damn farce. You, Ted. Nay, <laughs> Lomas, I'll leave it to thee. Great. Motion carried. Then have an help, Riverbank. This way, miss. Hello, darling. Hello, Carol. <clears throat> all right, Ted. Aye, it is and all. So you got my letter, all right? Yes. I saw them putting your name on the door. Isn't it splendid? Well, it means this. But now I've got a job, we can be married right away. Or well, that is, if you still want to. Oh, darling, of course I do. Besides, that'll settle Major Locke. Is that swine still pestering you? Well, he has been. Oh, but that's all over now. I'd like to break his neck. I can't think why Mrs. Carlyle tolerates. Auntie? Oh, she's known him a long time. But she likes you, too. Oh, that's good. She was awfully bucked about your news. Well, where is she? Did she come up with you? Yes, she's at the ball. She wants to meet your uncle. Not yet. Well, let's go and break the news now. All right. I tell you what, you go and get Mrs. Carlyle and bring her up to the house. Right away? Hmm, in about half an hour. I'll go on and break the ice. 
You don't think he'll mind? Great Scott, no. Why should he? Well, perhaps he won't trust me to look after you properly. He'll be awfully glad I've got you. He'd never part with Ellen. What's the matchbox for, Norman? Well, I don't rightly know, but you've got to stand the ball on summit. Quite safe now, Clara. It's an expensive game, is that? Ah, it is and all. Look at all the sticks you have to have. Do you need all those, Lomas? Well, if you didn't want them, they wouldn't be made, would they? You've been buying another new clothes, Lomas. Ah, well, if you're going to be a sportsman, you must have sporting clothes. You can't go hunting foxes on horseback with your Sunday trousers on. Is that what them guns are for? <laughs> nay, you don't shoot foxes. Oh. They run too fast. Take these away, Clara. Ah, and there's my fishing rod and my hunting whip. Hey, haven't I got everything to make a man happy? <laughs> I suppose you have. And when are we going to Brighton, Lomas? Brighton? <laughs> it's old. The swagger end of it. Hey, it's a grand house I've got and grand furniture. I'm thinking you'll be wanting a bigger staff. That's all right. I've engaged a grand housekeeper. You've engaged? Ah, why not? She's a wonderful housekeeper. It used to be in an earl's family. She only left because she couldn't get her wages. I suppose you never thought of taking me down there. Nay, you'd be no use what with luncheons and late dinners and like. <laughs> you'd be out of place. Well, I suppose I'd best be looking for another job. Nay, there's something plenty to do down here. You'll have young Stephen to look after. Oh, yes, of course. Will she darn your socks and mend your shirts for you? Well, I hadn't bargained with her for that, but I suppose I can find somebody to do it cheap enough. Well, I hope she'll wash your woolens at home, same as I do. Hey, I didn't know you washed them, Ellen. Nay, I thought perhaps you didn't. And if you was to get ill? <laughs> Why, you could always get one of those hospital nurses to look after you, couldn't you? Ah, of course I could. Hey, you're going to have a grand time down there, Lomas. Ah, I mean to and all. Hello, Uncle. Hello, young man. You're in early for your dinner. I mean, luncheon. Yes, I... I wanted a word with you, Uncle. That reminds me, I've got a pie to make. What's to do? Something wrong at the mill already? No, Uncle, it's not the mill. I... I haven't had a chance to tell you before. Uncle, I'm... I'm going to be married. What? Twenty-four, I'm going to be married, eh? <laughs> You're starting well. You don't object. Well, I do and all. If I'd known this before, I should never have... Well, what's done's done. You have to break it off. Uncle, you're not serious. Well, I am. You can't do two things at once. It's women or work. But I want you to meet her. Why, I I've asked them both up here. Both? Have you got engaged to two? No, my fiancée and her aunt. Oh, an aunt, eh? Well, what's she? Well, lady. Has she got any brass? Not much. Just her late husband's pension. Well, now can she be a lady? She's only a widow. Uncle, don't you ever want me to marry? Oh, well, I don't say that. I suppose some men must get married. Though I've got along well enough without it. Mr. Robinson? That's right. Ah. Who are you? Mrs. Carlyle. May we go in? Suppose you can. Nay, you'd best wait here. I'll not hear of it. There's two women here. Two women, all right. Fetch them in. I'll see them. Uh, no, 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 I'll go. You're to come in. Hello. Oh, you found the way all right. Oh, yes. Can Hello, I? dear. Uh, this is my uncle, Mr. Ranson. Uh, Miss Carlyle. Miss Surrey. How do you do? How do you do? I do. <laughs> Won't you? Oh, thank you. You must excuse my uncle for not getting up. He's uh, <clears throat> hurt his foot. Oh. Who's hurt his foot? An excuse you should have got up. Oh. Now, Mr. Ramsden, I don't know what you'll think of us for calling like this, but you must blame your wicked nephew here. You've called about this engagement? Yes. Isn't it charming? A lot of silly rubbish, I call it. Oh. Uncle. I'm not talking to thee. Then you mean... I do, and if you want to know my reasons, I'll tell you. Stephen! In the first place, I'm a very wealthy man. Oh, indeed. Ah, he's my heir. Oh. But if he does out, I don't want him to. He won't be my heir no longer. Really? I won't have him marry at his age. He's much too young. There, you see. What did I tell you? But, Auntie... Hush, dear. Mr. Ramsden is talking. No man should marry before he's 40. I've learnt that from experience. You married young. Other people's experience. I'm not married. No. However did you manage it? 
You must have been very popular with the girls. Well, I don't see as I wasn't. Mm -hmm. But I've had no time for women. I've worked too hard. Oh, you've plenty of time. You're still a young man. Well, I'm 50. But I've still got my own hair and my own teeth. I can crack nuts with them. Nuts. <laughs> you think no man should marry early? A man's life until he's 40 should be devoted to his work. I don't mind waiting. You wouldn't even advise their being engaged? I won't hear of it. But Mr. Uncle. Ramsden! We must be advised by Mr. Ramsden. He knows so much better than we do. Now, Mrs. Carlyle. You see, Mr. Ramsden, I'm placed in a most awkward position. I'm Carol's guardian. And it was clearly stated in her poor father's will that if she married without my consent, she was to forfeit her annuity. You had no objection before we came here? No. But I realize it's no use our asking Mr. Ramsden's advice unless we intend to abide by it. How old are you? Twenty. <laughs> and he's twenty-four. So we'll have no more nonsense about marriage. Thank you so much, Mr. Ramsden. You have helped me. I'm glad I have. Let you miss you after all this time. Why should he? There'll be plenty of others to look after him. I suppose you'll be leaving Bradley soon. I have got a house at Hove. Hove? Oh, really? I spend a great deal of my time there. Do you know the Spencers? Marks and Spencers? <laughs> no. General Sir Henry and Lady Spencer. No, I don't know no one down there. Oh, you must let me give you some introductions. I'll see that only the best people call. Call? For what? Call on you. Oh, why? For tea, like. How quick of you to grasp my meaning. And now? Oh, please don't get up. Why not? Your poor foot. Oh, it's uh, <coughs> better now. <laughs> well, well, goodbye, dear Mr. Ramsden. I am so grateful to you. It's so comforting for a poor, helpless woman to be able to consult a successful man like yourself. Oh, you're quite welcome. And don't forget, when you come to home, you must place yourself entirely in my hands. I'll see that you meet only the very best people. <laughs> I've got a little surprise for you. Here. Just cook them for my supper, will you? Both of them, sir? Uh, why not? Why do I be very like? God, you are sweaty. Have we got company here again? Just a few friends of Mrs. Carlyle, sir. Hello. Oh, I'm so glad you're back, dear Mr. Ramsden. You know Major Lock, of course. Oh, yeah. we met at the golf club, didn't we? Golf? Oh, you mean golf? Well, <laughs> it's pronounced uh, golf. You leave the L out. What the hell was it put in for, then? <laughs> I, um, I believe I've seen you several times since. Ah, I wondered if you had. Poor dear Bertie, he's so terribly short-sighted. And uh, how did you find the fish? Oh, not bad. I caught a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I always think fishing must take such a tremendous amount of patience. Especially when you're trying to hook. Big fish. You must meet General Sir Henry and Lady Spencer. I don't know them. Ah, but you must. Well, I have no objection. Splendid. Now, uh, what about a little dinner at the Metropole? Them asking me? Oh, no, you ask them. They'd be delighted. I seem to have done nothing but ask people to feed at the Metropole. I don't suppose they'll ask me for a change. Oh, but of course they will. Later on. <laughs> Lady Spencer, may I present Mr. Ramsden? How do you do? I'm not so dusty. So uh, nice of you to have invited us to dinner. We certainly didn't expect that. No, <laughs> neither did I. Will you be out of the South Down tomorrow, Sir Henry? Uh, yes. Oh, you'll attend, of course. Uh, I might as well try out that new horse you bought for me. <laughs> it cost me enough. I was going to ask you and Bobby Lund to come out in the car with me, but um, it's out of action. Oh, no, you had a car, lock. Oh, well, uh, I mean, the, the one I usually borrow. Oh, I'm quite sure Mr. Ramsden would be delighted to lend you his car. You know Bobby Lund, don't you? Ah, he's another one who seems to be short-sighted. Must be an affliction in these parts. Then we may have the car. We'd love to come and watch you. Ah, you can have it. <laughs> uh, it's quite sporting of you. Suppose there'll be room for me to get there and back? Oh, I expect we can squeeze you in somewhere. Thanks very much. Not at all. Well, good hunting.
big four-legged old fat camel. Hurry up, sir. You'll be in it again. Ah, very nearly was. Oi, they'd be going to kill. Good, I've finished with that brute. You'll be bloody. Aye, show all that horse if I can catch it. Aye, yeah, on that, give you the brush. Good, I can do with that. Oh, shall I catch your horse for no, you, sir? No, go away. I'm going home by car. We'll pick him up at the bridge. Hey! 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 Dave! I wonder how the Cotton King's enjoying himself. <laughs> well, the last time I saw him, he was putting Dick Turpin to shame. <laughs> Probably riding to York. Or oh, wherever he came from. <laughs> <laughs> when does Carol come back from Switzerland? I wrote and told her to return before the end of the month. Yes, but unfortunately she doesn't always do everything you tell her. Oh, my dear Barry, you can't blame me. I do everything I can to interest her in you. She's still in love with that young cub, but... She won't get my consent, or old Ramsden's. I'll see to that. You'd better. I'm tired of being snubbed. She knows I approve of the match. With her thousand a year and my pension, We'd get along famously. Well, I can't make her marry you. You do what you can, my dear. And if it comes off, we'll wipe out that little debt. Oh, thank you, Bertie, dear. Listen, why don't you go over to Switzerland? Mm, that's an idea. Perhaps I will. You're back early, sir. Well, what of it? I want a bath. I'm sorry, sir. The bathroom's being cleaned. Well, the get me something to eat, then. I'm hungry. Luncheon will not be ready until one o'clock, sir. Well, boil me some eggs. I don't know what cook will say. She has to I don't now. care what she says. Get on with it. Really, sir, I'm not accustomed to being dressed in that manner. Ah, well, that you'll get used to it. Here, you pull these boots off. I was not engaged to the valet, sir. I thought that was clear. Ah, well, you're not engaged to anything now. You're sacked. Is that clear? It'll be a relief to watch for gentlemen again. That's quite enough of that. And you get those eggs boiled or you'll go up the same road. I've already pointed out, sir, that cooking... All right, I'll boil my own eggs and you and cook and the whole flaming lot of you can go. You're out. You're sacked. You're fired. You can all go to blazes. come from. I know. I read about it in Sunday paper. I don't know what my mother will say. Well, don't you want to come? Aye, I'll try anything once. When do we go? 4.30 train. But what about Mr. Stephen? Oh, of course. I've forgotten. Well, you stay here and go on with the packing. I'll go down to the mill and see him. Hey, Ted, Lomas has sent for me. I'm going to Brighton. Hey, I thought he'd not be able to do without you. <laughs> but I must find someone to look after Stephen first. Hello, then. What's to do? Look at that. Well, that's fine. Where are you going? As soon as I can get someone to look after you. Oh, don't you worry about me. Nay, but I must. Men are helpless creatures. Well, I can cook eggs. And addict. That's an idea. You don't need bobbins for those. Yes, but... Nonsense, Ted. will make a splendid maid of all work. I, I'll do for you. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> well, it'll be a change for a mill. I'll get me caught. I don't like leaving you to Ted Crowther's mercies. He should have let you get married. Oh, he still won't hear of it. I'll try and talk him round when I get there. Oh, thanks, Ellen. You're up, pal. <laughs> have you finished packing? Aye, I have enough. Have you found anyone to look after Mr. Stephen? Aye, I found him a batman. What might that be? Come in, Ted. Hello, Clary. What's he doing here? I'm to be batman and all. Well, I've heard you called some funny names, but I never knew you were as bad as that. Sure where things is, Clara. I'll get a taxi. So I'm to show you where things is. Hey, I'm to have complete run of the kitchen. Aye, same as cockroaches. Aye. Them coals. <laughs> I didn't think they were oysters, but what do I like them with? Matches. You didn't think you'd use a squirt? Nay, I mean, where sticks? There's some boxes and chopper into yard. That's as near as thou gets to sticks. Hey, it's going to be terrible hard work. That's what you're here for, ain't it? Ah, but I was in oaks. It wasn't going to be as hard as all that. Them potatoes, and that's nice to peel them with. <laughs> Nay, I never peel potatoes. I cook them with all my can, army fashion. You know, Claire, if you peel potatoes, they bleed to death. 
Pity no one started to feel you. That sink where you wash plates. Ah, and what do I do with broken pieces when I finish with them? If you break out in this house, I'll break you. A chap can't help accidents. If they're going to have accidents, they'd best stand in Bypass Road. That's the best place for accidents, not this kitchen. That is a door, Clara. Come on, have good luggage. Put it down there, Clara. We'll sort it out later. Miss Marbury, the new housekeeper? Nay, I'm his old housekeeper. You're welcome to him. Thank you very much. How much is that? Well, there's uh, four and six on the clock. What, for that short drive? Uh, well, you see, it's a short season at home. Would have been one and six up north. Yes, well, not up north now. I said there was four and six on the clock. Well, you got four and six in your hand. Don't you give any tips up north? Aye, but we're not up north now. It's a grand place. Puts me in mind of pictures I've seen of the Crystal Ice Palace. It's certainly an exhibition of some sort. Well, let's get it to right. Eee, washing in front hall. What will neighbours say? Oh, what is it? It's woolen pants. They've properly shrunk them up. Here, take it away quick. There's someone coming. Were you looking for Mr. Ramsden? Yes. I suppose you're Miss Marbury, his housekeeper. Yes. Mr. Ramsden has often spoken to me about you. Has he and all? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you knock. <laughs> I never knocked. I always walk straight in. Then you'll be Mrs. Carlyle. Quite right. I heard you were coming. Are you uh, quite well? Eh, hey, I'm nicely, thank you. How are you? I'm glad to say that I'm also uh, nicely, thank you. You've only just arrived. Aye. Did you have a good journey? Not so dusty. Oh, so you came by road then? Me, I came by train. Oh, well, of course, that wouldn't be so dusty. Mr. Anderson will be glad to see you. Well, I, uh, I won't keep you. And I wouldn't like to keep you either. Oh, yes, you did. And I wish you'd stop pestering me. I'm never likely to marry you, so it's a waste of time following me about. I don't think so. Why don't you go back to home and leave me alone? I'm in no hurry. I'm patient. Well, I'm not. <laughs> will you sign these now, Mr. Stephen? Yes, put them down there, will you? I've got that Leeds contract. Aye, it's been redrafted. By the way, you won't forget the cheque for the insurance. Fourteen days grace expires tomorrow. Right. Got the letter? I it here with Thomas. Oh, I forgot. This has just come for you. Switzerland? Give me a timetable. Yes, Mr. Stephen. And how do you think dear Mr. Ramsden is looking? Hey, he looks properly worn out. All them golfs and dinners and dances. But in Bradley, he was getting into a rut. We've been trying to bring him out. Ah, they've all been sticking their pins into him. They'll none of them be happy till they've got him on their plates. What a weird expression. You seem very anxious about him. I am anxious about him. I understand him like no other woman does. And of course, you've been in his service so long. What an invaluable housekeeper you must be. Hmm. We can all of us be replaced. Oh, but I'm quite sure you would find no difficulty in obtaining another situation. I should be delighted to recommend you. Thank you. I'm sure your name would convey a lot. Of course, you must find this a great change from Bradley. I do. And I expect you find the people very different from those in the North. Nay, folks are mostly the same all the world over. Only their manners is different. If ever you catch me making such a fool of myself again, I'll... Call it a game, I've done with it. I've done with it. Oh, silly, petty, fogging, driveling, hitting a little ball about till you lose it. If ever you catch me making such a fool of myself again, what the blazes I ever... Hey, I beg your pardon, I didn't see you. And I don't always swearing in front of ladies. Oh, that's quite all right, my dear. I swear like a trooper myself. <laughs> Come and sit here by me. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen. Ellen, that's fetching tea. Nay, yeah, Lomas, it's only four o'clock. That's fashionable hour. Hour. 
Well, I'm not used to mine so early, but I dare say I'll get used to it. It sounds so delightfully informal, hearing a housekeeper calling her master by his Christian name and sitting down to meals with him. I uh, know it's wrong. I love it altered. Oh, please don't take any notice of what I say. I really came to see you about a dance on Saturday night. Dancing? Nay, hey, that's another thing I've done with. Oh, I thought you were getting along famously. I finished with it. Oh, just Saturday night. You needn't dance. Ah, I know. Sit back and watch the others at it and pay for everything. No thanks, I've had some. I shall be there. Why, with that major lock? I've often wondered if you and he have got Oh, any... you're entirely wrong. As a matter of fact, he's very smitten with my niece, Carol. Oh, she's given up Stephen then. Oh, I'm glad of that. He were too young to wed with Stephen. What you said that day was so right. No man should marry until he's 40. Such an adorable age. I know I belong to a different race from you. I'm north and you're south. I sometimes wonder if you and your pals aren't tolerating me for the sake of my brass and laughing at me behind my back. Oh, no. We all admire you. And then again, why should they laugh? How many of them could work their way up as I've done? Aren't I to be admired? Of course you are. Oh, damn it, I admire myself sometimes. I think you're delightful. You mean that? Of course I do. Well, it's not so bad to know that someone thinks you're delightful. It must be wonderful. You ought to know. How should I? Hasn't anyone ever told you that you were delightful? No one as nice as you. Oh, I'm glad you think that I'm nice. Mm. Because, Mrs. Carlyle, I want to ask you if you'll marry me. Mr. Ramsden! Loma! And we'll say now to nobody yet, eh? We'll make the announcement just whenever you think fit. Hang the woman. Are you ready, Lomas? I'm simply dying for a cup of tea. Shall I then over and pour out? <laughs> you take sugar, Mrs. Carlyle. You mind if I help myself? Ah, give it base in that proper way. Sweets to the sweet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bread and butter, Lomas. Serve company first. For you? Well, give it her. She can't stretch as far as that. Thank you. Won't you have some, Lomas? No, I'm not hungry. Would you like some butter toast? No. Shall I boil you an egg? I've told you I'm not hungry. Your appetite's gone off. Have you taken your pills regular? Damn me pills. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, such I'm... nasty things, pills, aren't they? I've had your hunting suit keen, Lomas. Horse exercise doesn't suit Mr. Ramsden. And I'm not going to allow him to do anything that doesn't agree with him. Do you mind if I smoke? Uh, no, oh, no, it's all right. May I offer you one? I'm much obliged. <laughs> Turkish. Mm. Fancy. Wouldn't you sooner have your pipe, Lomas? Oh, please do smoke your pipe if you'd prefer it. Oh, no, I'd, I'd sooner have a cigarette. Oh. Hey, and you always used to hate them. <laughs> I must be going. Heavens! Is that clock right? It's broken. There isn't one in the house that goes. <laughs> well, I shall see you tomorrow. Of course. I shall be at the band at 11. I'll go and get the car to send you back. Thanks. <laughs> oh, goodbye, dear Miss Marbury. It means a charming... Well, I hope you'll be happy with him, I'm sure. What do you mean? He's given you a good run, but you've got him at last. How dare you? Hey, you don't like the truth. Thirty-eight years he slaved at mill to make the brass that you're in love with. I wonder how long it'll take you to spend it. You. <laughs> Clara. Take those things away. Oh, uh, Ellen. Yes, Lomas? Uh, there's just one or two things I'd like to mention to you. Yes, Lomas? Uh, of course, you know we're not in Lancashire no more. I know that, Lomas. Ah, uh, well, uh, now, in Ovia, it isn't thought proper for a housekeeper to call her boss by his Christian name. 
Uh, of course, uh, I don't really... It won't ma- happen again. Of course, you quite understand, lass. I know. I sent the tea things away, Mr. Ramsden. Did you want them? No. Is there anything else I can do for you? No. Then you don't want me anymore? No. Well, I want you to accept me notice. I leave your service a month today. Got Stevens address. That I have not. Why, what? Well, the mill. The whole place is ablaze. What? When's it due back? Not before tomorrow at earliest. Oh, then come on, lend a hand. Any lives lost? None, I'm thankful to say. There's a warehouse, much stock in it, all their Indian contract. 12,000 pounds, sir. Just ready for shipment. Yeah, somebody being in rotten shoes. Someone else is going to make some profit in India. Ah, he'll be losing his Italian deal, too. Ah, yeah, same firm will be getting that. Come on. Amazon's going to look pretty sick. So are his shares. Same as you, living. Even come and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought you'd retired to witness. Yes, so I had. But Mrs. wants to be in fashion, so I've come to all. Ah, how is she? Fine. She's gone to bake up for holiday. Huh? Mm. Uh, won't you sit down? <laughs> Ooh. Hey, hey, you've been horse riding. Hey, I have not all. <laughs> Well, how did you get on? Yeah, I got on all right, but I, I couldn't stop on. Ah, uh, it's a beggar, is that? Stopping on. Uh. Hey, it's grand to be retired. Aye. No more getting up at seven o'clock in the morning and being at mill at half past eight. Nay. No more slaving your guts out till six o'clock at night. Nay. The whole of the day to yourself. Aye. Aye. You play golf? I did, but never no more. Same here. I gave my sticks to caddy and I resigned from club. Shit. <laughs> Only thing I know about golf is the language. <laughs> Knocking a ball about. Well, I didn't get so far as that. <laughs> How do you get on with people down here? Oh, fine. And you? Oh, fine. Of course, at first they were a bit strange. <laughs> didn't seem to understand me. Aye. But I took trouble to conquer my accent. Same as what I've done. Aye. What do you do at mornings? Hey, the mornings is a bit of a puzzle. <laughs> they are and no. all. I tried shooting. How did you do? <laughs> I shot ferret. Uh, find it safer listening to band? Hey, you can't listen to band every morning, though. Uh, what do you do with afternoons? Well, the afternoons is a bit of a puzzle. Ah, uh, they are and no. all. What do you do in the evenings after supper? Hey, we call it dinner. So do we, when I can think of it. Well, you know, I'm not quite sure as evenings is not the most puzzling job of all. Uh, you know... Sometimes I pull out balance sheet at mill for a bit of quiet reading. Hey, that's funny. That's what art does. Aye. <laughs> Better than newspapers. I hardly look at them. Yeah, except financial page. Hey, it's grand to be retired. 
Go on with the keeper, you. And here, I'm very glad to have seen you. I'd stop for the art summit coming round for a game of billiards. I didn't know you liked billiards. I ate it. Oh. So why? We must have a game sometime. We must see a lot of other. Ah, we've got it together us two. We've a lot in common, you know. Aye, <laughs> we have not all. I don't know what he'll say about you being away from Mill. Well, I'll have to chance that. We came straight back from Paris. Paris? Yes. He came over to meet me. We only crossed last night. Well, never mind. We'll be back at the mill tomorrow. Yeah, I'd like to see you two married. But I'm afraid I've not much influence with him now. Why? Did something happen? Yes, I... I've given him a month's notice. What? Ellen. Oh, but he... He'll never be able to get on without you. Well, we won't talk about that. Let's decide what's best for you. No answer. It's for Mr. Ramsden. I thought it was my football coupon. There's a telegraph here for Mr. Ramsden. Well, put it on table. And so we want to get married early next month. Now that everything's all right at the mill, he may relent. What the devil are you doing here? And you, young woman. Well, you see, Uncle... I didn't expect to have the pleasure of your company here this morning. No, I'm afraid it is a bit of a surprise. Ah, oh, you must have plenty of time on your hands to be able to go gallivanting about the country. Uncle... Why aren't you in Bradley? Well, Uncle, won't you change your mind and let us get married? Mad. I thought you'd given him up. Now, I've told you my answer once and for all. I'll have my... It's for you, Mr. Ramsden. What's this? What is it? Mill burned down early this morning. Riverbank burned? But Lomas! Warehouse gutted. Wire instructions, Ingram. See what it says in the paper. This is what comes of neglecting your job. That's not fair. Stephen couldn't help the fire. It says here the old mill's intact. But how could it have happened? Cigarettes. You mark my word. Cigarettes. The warehouse. That means the Indian contract. Aye, and the Italian. <laughs> This'll do Swift's a bit of good. That's 12, 15, that's 27,000 pounds worth. It is. And 50,000 for the building. Hee, <laughs> that's nigh on 100,000. It's a good job we're insured. Uncle. Aye? We're not insured. What? We're not insured. The premium was never paid. And why the hell not? I forgot to sign the check before I left for Paris. I see. You forgot to sign the check before you went to Paris. And what were you doing in Paris? Oh, that was my fault. Ah, it would be. Jack Adams was right. He ought to have had this job, not you. Pig-headed Ramsden again. A hundred thousand pounds. That's the capital of the company. We're as good as bust and all through you. But the old mill's intact, no more. Ah, the old mill when I started when I was a lad. Where I took over control 15 years ago. Well, now I've got to take over control again. But it'll be a harder fight than it was then. I'm not so young as I was. Here, order the car. I'm going back to Bradley. What's the time? Isn't there a clock in this house that's working? What's come over you all? It's 12.35 by town hall clock. Right, well, if I look nippy, I can get the 1-8 up to town. Now, I'm going to sell this house and the furniture and every flaming thing in it. You can stay here till the sale's over. Shall I come with you, Uncle? No, you can do what she's going to do. You can go. In a month's time? No, no, and to hell if you like.
Supper's ready. Oh, that's why they all look like a foggy mersey. Aye. <laughs> well, heaven help them that's got a weak stomach. That's all the grace I'm going to say tonight. But I good much will want to say a prayer of thanksgiving if I get through this safely. I shouldn't be surprised if I found my slippers in it. What is it? Stew. I learned how to make it in farming. Uh -huh, I thought so. What do you flavour it with, iodine? Nay, that's browning. <laughs> shouldn't be surprised if it were blacking. It's easy to grumble. You haven't had the pains of making it. No, and I'm not going to have the pains of eating it either. I wasn't brought up to be a domestic help. Uh, the thing that worries me, Ted, is what you was brought up to be. Hey, I wash me hands of you, Lord Miss Ramsden. It's a pity you didn't wash them before you made that. Aren't you going to eat it? No, thanks. You can bring me some bread and cheese and give that muck to the cat. Any, anyway, he's a good cat. I wouldn't like to harm him. Well, what's the matter with it? Well, all I can say is it's a good job it isn't fly season or we should be crowded out. Well, shall I make your bed, Lomis? No, thank you, Ted. You made it last night. I'd like to get some sleep tonight. Well, what can I do? You can take these letters to the post. There's one for you and all. Ah, oh, thanks. I'm certain it wasn't the set mill on fire. You can't even get this blinking thing to go. Hello, Jack. Going to post? Aye, right, so are you, it seems. Ah, there's one here for you. Oh. Hey, uh, I'll post those for you, Ted. You might drop them again. Hey, thanks, Jack. It'll save me a step. Well, good night. Good night. I'd sooner any firm at Swift's have got those contracts. He's been smart as Jack Adams. I give him his due. He was very busy this morning, buzzing around in his car. I don't know what he's been up to. I suppose he'd plenty to say about me. I wish you'd called a meeting of the shareholders. They expected it. Aye, ah, they want him to stand up before them and apologize. Well, they've got my letter by now. What? You've written to them? Last night. There was one for you and all. Didn't you have it? No. You should have got it first thing this morning. Here's a copy. Sir or Madam, regarding the fire at Riverbank Mill, I hereby beg to state that if any shareholder has any sort of grievance, I will purchase any or all of his or her one pound shares at 35 shillings each. As your solicitor, you should have got me to draft this out. Ah, uh, you'd have wrapped it up and said that I regretted. Well, there's no apologies there. None meant, and none given. But 35 bob a time. Why, 32 and 6 would have been handsome. I've made it certain they've got nothing to grumble at. Big-headed as ever, Lomas. Why, these shares won't be worth more than four or five bob each now. Well, that's what they stood at when I bought my lot 20 years ago. I put my every bob into it then, and I will now. Nearly 40,000 pounds. Well, you needn't think you're going to buy my shares. Why not? Because I know they'll be up again soon. I've got faith in you, Lomas. Oh, have you? <clears throat> well, give us a match then. Pity all this worry has spoiled your retirement. Let me tell you something, Bob Ingram. Those 38 years I spent at this mill were the happiest in my life, if I'd only known it. But I thought... And those six months when I were retired were the most miserable. You take my advice, Bob. Never you retire. I doubt if I ever have the chance. Well, Jack Adams, this is an honour I didn't expect. I told you when you appointed that I've young man... I've always what you told me. I know what you're here for, to sell your shares. Well, sell them and be hanged. I'm selling right enough, but whether it's you or me that's going to be hanged. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's get on with it. So you want to sell? Aye. 23,465 shares. What? Well, you never had 23,000 shares in your life. Mr. Adams can show us his certificates, no doubt. Aye, take a look at that. Well, I'm hanged if he hasn't bought these today. So that's what you were doing buzzing about in your car. What did he pay for them? Ten shillings, five shillings, four shillings. These people know that Mr. Ramsden was offering 35 shillings a share. It wasn't my job to ask. How did you know? I got your letter. Unfortunately, others just missed the post. What do you mean? Ted asked me to post them. I'm willing to sell at 37 and 6. 
I don't know what you uh, reckon that to be, but I make it 43,996 pounds, 17 and 6. Will you check that? My God. You did me a good turn not calling that general meeting. You dirty... I'm not asking for your check tonight, but I shall expect it first thing in the morning. Get out. Good night. Bob, what am I going to do? That's nearly 4,000 pounds more than I've got in all the world. If you've come here to stop us, you're too late. We were married this morning, and I'm done with you. I suppose you understand that your annuity automatically reverts to me. We know that, and do you think we well, care about that? Well, don't worry yourself. I'm not in the least interested in what happens to you. Well, at least we can start our married life without interference. Oh. What's that, your married life? Have you two dead? Yes, we came to tell you. Well, um, did you know about this? Of course not. I should never have allowed it. Ah, I thought you wanted to go back on your own word. That's what I've come up here about. Am I to understand from your letter that you've lost all your money? Well, he's lost most of it for me. Who was responsible doesn't interest me. And are you going to live up here again? Ah, that's right. Well, I hope you don't expect me to live here with you. What? what? And to think that you had the audacity to ask me to marry you. Great Auntie. Scott! Well, don't stand gaping there like a couple of fish. Yes, and why the heck shouldn't I? I'm over 40, ain't I? Oh, what language! What grammar! You Bulgarian! Oh, you're calling me names now, are you? You knew you were not in the position to support me in the style my birth demands. How I could ever have entertained the idea. Hmm, you entertained it quick enough when you thought I got plenty of brass. To think of all I did for you. The introductions I gave you. It's about all you and your pals ever did give me. Why, you were the laughing stock of home. Ah, up and I was. I won't be a laughing stock again. Not for any man. Not for any woman, neither. Oh, if only my poor dear mother were alive. She'd have been over owned by now. Oh! How bad! I shall catch the next train back to civilization. Good. Carol, since you chose to marry into this dreadful family, I've finished with you. Good! If your precious husband is anything like his uncle... Well, at least I owe him a debt of gratitude. If he hadn't done what he did, I might have married you. Oh. As it is, I was going to kick him out, but I shan't now, just to spite you. Oh. He, you're a bad one, you are. Oh! Uncle, do you really mean that? Hey, I don't know. When it comes to pinch, I don't suppose it'll chuck you out. Now, when you said him, did you really think I'd chuck him out? I was afraid you would. And yet you chanced it. I love him. And you knew your aunt would chuck you out and all. Oh, I knew she would. And yet you chanced it. I love him. <laughs> Must be a wonderful thing to see you love. Haven't you ever had anyone to love you? Well, if I had, I should have known about it, shouldn't I? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes people have loved for years and years without even suspecting it. Well, they must be fatheads then. Not always. Perhaps they're too busy with their own affairs. Hi. Selfish like. You might call it that. Well, I should have known. Sometimes they grow old and die without ever knowing. And then it's a tragedy. Hi. A tragedy. Hey. Ah, but love won't feed you and clothe you and buy your coals. Now, what are you going to do about that, Stephen? Work. The same as you did. Ah, you'll have to. I can't help you now. I look like losing everything myself, thanks to Jack Adams. Oh, there must be some way out. Can't I do anything? I doubt it. Still, you'd better come along and see me at mill tomorrow. Bless you. Oh, thanks, Uncle. Don't thank me. Thank your new boss. Hey, Mr. Tetler. Is Loma in? Uh, I'll tell him. All those. You've left these books in for all again. Here you are untidy. Well, put them on the table then. Uh, and you want to see Joe Tetley? Of course I do. Is it though? Well, why don't you show him in here then? <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we better be gay. Ah, well, I'll ask you to stay for supper. Oh, and I don't think we'll have enough plates left. <laughs> Hello, Job. I won't have a word with you, Lomas. Ah, this is our Stephen, you remember him? 
This is his wife. They've just got married. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. But I thought you didn't approve of marriage. Hey, my ideas of life seem to be upside down. Good night. <laughs> He's a brick. I wish he were as happy as we are. That's easy. I'll go now. I won't be a minute. All right. And I'll help Ted in the kitchen. Oh, I can do with a bit of help. I've not washed up since Thursday. Okay. I'll give them to me. Aye, Bob Ingram told me. That's 4,000 more than you're worth. Well, here's my check. Eh, hey, my gum. And I thought I hadn't a friend left. Nay, nee, it's not friendship, it's a sound investment. <laughs> you old beggar, I thought you'd finished with business. Uh, just the excuse I've been waiting for. Now I'll have somewhat better to think of than golf. Golf? Hey, hey golf. golf. <laughs> well, you can send a receipt round in the morning. Hey, I'd like to have a look at Jack Adams's face. <laughs> <laughs> nay, hey, don't bother. I can let myself out. Good night, Lomas. Good night, Job. And thank you. You should see it in here. Nay, no, Ted, I don't want any supper. You eat it. Lost your appetite again, Loma. Ellen! Where did you spring from? I've only come to collect a few things, and the month is up. But you, you mean you really are leaving me? Well, everything's settled up at all. That's what we arranged, isn't it? Yeah. I've made a proper fool of myself. Maybe. I've missed you, Ellen. I thought maybe you would. A woman always knows what's in the mind of... of them she likes. Them she likes? So that's what the little ass meant. And you still like me, Ellen? In spite of all I've said and done? When a woman likes a man, she goes on liking him. What he says or does makes no difference. That's the worst of a woman, liking a man. A after all these years... You always were fat-headed. Nay, pig-headed and selfish. But will you marry me, Ellen? If you're sure you can't do without me, Mr. Ramsden. Mr. Ramsden. Here. Yeah. <laughs>